In this video, we are going to prove pi is irrational with AP calculus knowledge. The brightest minds of humankind studied pi for many, many centuries, but the first proof of pi's irrationality was not given until the 18th century. If you follow this video step by step, you will be amazed how powerful you are after just taking one introductory calculus course. Like any other proof of irrationality, we first assume that pi is a over b, a rational number. Then we construct a very interesting function fx that has two important properties. The value of the positive integer n will be specified later. The first property states that f0 and arbitrary order derivative at 0 are all integers. This property seems very strong, but its proof is actually not that hard. If we expand fx as a polynomial of x, the lowest order is n, while the highest order is 2n. We don't care about the exact values of c1 up to cn, all we care is that they are integers. And they are because a and b are integers. If you want, you can calculate the exact values of them using the binomial formula. As an easiest example, c1 is just a to the power of n. The s derivative of fx has two cases. The first case is that i is less than n, including 0. In this case, each term will still have x to the power of a positive integer. Therefore, we substitute 0, we get 0, and we don't care about the d coefficients. For the second case that i is greater than or equal to n, we will have zeros and constants after taking the derivative. Without loss of generalizability, let's pick n plus 2 for the demonstration. The first two terms will become zero because they run out of power. The third term will become a constant and the remaining terms will still have positive orders. Because c3 is an integer and n factorial get cancelled, Therefore, the result is still an integer for i is greater than or equal to n case. Combining these two cases, our property 1 is fully justified. If you watched my pancake approximation of pi video, this function does look like a pancake function between 0 and pi. Let's look at our second property. fx and its derivatives are not only integers at 0, but also at pi. Let's plot fx utilizing the classic approximation 22 over 7. fx is symmetric, and the axis of symmetry is x equals 11 over 7. And for the general case, the axis of symmetry is a over 2b. If we take the derivatives, signs may be flipped, but integers will remain integers. This concludes our proof of the second property. Now we are going to put those two properties to use. Before constructing this big fx, let's summarize what we have. We have this small fx. It is very well behaved that its values at both 0 and pi and its derivatives at both 0 and pi to arbitrary orders are all integers. Therefore, if I construct a linear combination of fx and its derivatives, I can create the big fx such that its value at 0 and its value at pi are both zeros as well. We can do telescoping if we take the derivative of fx twice. Notice that the last term is going to be 0 because small fx as a polynomial has the highest order 2n. After aligning terms and add those two expressions together, we have a very nice identity. The next step is crucial. We multiply both sides by sin x. The double primes and the existence of sin x should give us a strong suggestion that it's a derivative of another expression. We construct such an expression because big fx is only integer at 0 and pi. To make use of this fact, we have to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. The integral of a function's derivative is just the function itself. Our left-hand side is reduced to big F pi plus big F zero, and 
they are both integers. Everything we have done up to this point is to prove that fx sin x dx integrated from 0 to pi is an integer. But sin x from 0 to pi is always less than 1, so applying the squeeze theorem, it's less than integration of fx itself. And we can lose the bound a little bit more. First, we can replace x with pi, so from x to the power of n to pi to the power of n. Then we can replace a minus bx with a, because a is always greater than a minus bx from 0 to pi. Remember, pi is a over b. The right-hand side becomes a constant. It is pi to the power of n plus 1, a to the power of n over n factorial. Now it's time to pick our n. For whatever value a takes, we can pick n large enough such that this expression becomes less than 1 and there is no integer between 0 and 1. Therefore, we have a contradiction. So pi cannot be written as a over b, a rational number. Let's reflect on this proof. It is very similar to the proof of E's irrationality. They follow the same logic that there cannot be another integer between one integer and that integer plus a small fraction. You can watch that video here, it's only about one minute. We can squeeze that small fraction arbitrarily small by increasing n. But the reason why pi's proof is much more difficult is that it's not easy to find that integer in between. Therefore, we need the big fx and the fundamental theorem of calculus. And from big fx, we can construct the small fx. To have integer values at the boundaries of integrations, we need the trigonometry functions. The proof in this video is given by mathematician Ivan Levin in 1946. I cannot confirm exactly how he constructed this proof at the first place. But by verifying the proof forward and compare it against the proof of ease irrationality, we may be able to peek into the thinking process of the greatest minds among us. Thank you for watching, and I think you may enjoy this video that this small fx is just like a pancake function. Mm -hmm.